So when we did the second part of our pressure exploration, we were looking at the relationship between pressure and the number of particles. So quick reminder, STP is standard temperature and pressure. So one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury and 273 Kelvin. Our data from this part of the exploration showed that we had a direct relationship between pressure and the number of particles. That means that if our number of particles is going up, our pressure is also going to go up, and if our number of particles goes down, our pressure is going to go down. Our graph was a straight line with our pressure on our y-axis because that was our dependent variable, and the number of particles on the x-axis because that's the independent variable, that's the one that we're manipulating. Just a note, it starts at zero, zero because if you don't have any particles, you have a vacuum, and a vacuum has no pressure. So our line goes up, and so if we read our graph, if we have a high pressure, say up here, intersects with the line, and we have a high number of particles, and if we have a low pressure, it intersects with the line here, and we have a low number of particles. So that's how we can see the relationship from the graph. So our problems for PN work very similarly to our problems from PV. So we're going to work through two examples. Our first example says you put five puffs of gas in a sealed container and it has a pressure of 2.6 atmospheres. What will the pressure be if you release two puffs of gas? So in this case, we have our same table as before, but we're ignoring T and V because those are being held constant. And now we just have to fill in what numbers we already have. Our problem tells us that we have five puffs, so that's going to go here and it's in a sealed container, pressure of 2.6 atmospheres. What will the pressure be? So that's what we're looking for. If you release two puffs of gas. Now, two is not going to go here because we're losing two puffs. So to figure out how much we have left, we start with what we have. We lost two, so five minus two, that gives us three. So our container has in it three puffs of gas. So now if we look at our effect row, our N is going down. We're decreasing our number of particles. So what's going to happen to our pressure? Our pressure is also going to go down. It's a direct relationship. So if one goes down, so does the other. So now the first thing we're going to write is our 2.6 atmospheres because the pressure is what we're trying to change. Remember, we're not trying to change pressure units. So the units that are going to go here are the ones for N. That way those cancel out because they're top and bottom and we're going to be left with units of atmospheres. So now we have to figure out where our numbers go. Well, if we want our pressure to go down, we need our smaller number on top and our bigger number on the bottom. So now if we do the math, we do 2.6 times 3 divided by 5 and we get 1.56 atmospheres. So that's what we could if we wanted to write in the box over here. And now the last question you're going to ask is, does that answer make sense? Well, we said our pressure was going to go down. It went from 2.6 to 1.56. So yes, it did. That answer is correct. Let's look at our second example. You have a container with 2.5 puffs of gas and a pressure of 3.1 atmospheres. You add gas until the pressure reaches 5 atmospheres. How many total puffs of gas are in the container? So we start with, so we can ignore the temperature and the volume. We start with 2.5 puffs, and it's at 3.1 atmospheres. And you add gas until the pressure reaches 5 atmospheres, so that's our final. How many particles do you have in your container? So what did our pressure do? Our pressure increased, so then we ask, what is our number of particles going to do? It's also going to increase. You also see that from the question because you add gas, and when you're adding gas particles, you're increasing the total number of particles. So we're going to start with our 2.5 puffs. Multiply it by our pressure factor, so we have our two pressure units. Those will cancel out. Oops. I want to write that. And we will be left with units of puffs, which is what we want. We want to know total number of gas particles. So if we want our N to go up, our number of particles to increase, we need our bigger number on top. 
and our smaller number on the bottom. So now if we do 2.5 times 5 divided by 3.1, we get 4.03 puffs. And that's what we could write in here. Now we're going to check, does that make sense? Well, we said our number of puffs was going to increase. We went from 2.5 to 4.03. That is an increase in the number of puffs.